Hello friends, my name is Katie from Eternal Flame and today I thought I'd share with you a quick unboxing of my 2023 schedule planner take a note. So if you're interested in seeing that in comparison to my 2022 Hobonichi cousin, please stick around. Thanks everyone! Alright, before we get right into this video, I did want to always, like I always do, take one quick moment to thank you all so very much for taking the time to join us today. As always, if you enjoyed this video, I would so very much appreciate it if you let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. Alright, so I actually already <laughs> opened this uh, planner and started filming and it just it went really poorly. So <laughs> I'm starting the video over. I took some of the tissue paper and plastic packaging off to kind of um, speed it up a little bit. So in 2022, it was the very first time that I um, experimented and experienced, honestly, <laughs> the uh, Tomoe River paper in a bunch of Hobonichi planners and I made the decision when I put in my Hobonichi order through the 1101 site not to pick up the A5 Cousin and I kind of regretted it. So I ended up, um, instead of picking up the Cousin, which I'm not sure why I didn't do that, I ended up getting this take a note. Um, I hear that this runs out pretty quickly like it's limited supply and uh, so when I saw it come back in stock on Amazon I picked it up so I just want to tell you very briefly um, one I very much appreciate the packaging here so I'm just gonna set the box aside um, cost wise the take a note is a lot cheaper than the Hokanichi cousin in the US um, in what I've seen so I paid $35 for this 2023 uh, a5 size take a note planner and I paid I think just over or around $65 from Amazon for the Hobonichi Cousin uh, in 2022. And that's what I've seen on Amazon for this year. And uh, yeah, I think it's a little cheaper if you buy it from 1101, but you have to pay for shipping from Japan. So it probably comes out to about the same. So if you're thinking about comparing the two and which one you want, uh, just know that this one <laughs> runs out pretty quickly. And the other thing to note is that this, the Cousin actually comes in English this year. Uh, last year it did not. So this one is actually the Japanese version. So I just want to show you, obviously this is not like a apples to apples comparison because this is one that I, is very well loved. How thick this one is compared to the Take a Note, which is brand new. So um, honestly, when it comes to thickness, it was probably pretty similar, but I, I use a lot of stickers and washi tape and note paper and things in here, which I'll show you very quickly uh, before we get, I guess after we get into the Take a Note. Because I do want to be able to show you like a comparison. So this one has an open binding here or exposed binding I believe. Uh, but it's also supposed to be lay flat similar to the Hobonichi Cousin. Which if I'm being honest, I guess it does lay flat. It probably doesn't really lay flat for me because I use uh, so many stickers and washi tape in the same areas that it gets a little bumpy. Um, but yeah, so they're both lay fat, flat. And I'm going to set the cousin aside and focus on this bad boy for now. So I thought this was really cute. I think it's kind of like a bookmark and it has the, I guess, year at a glance on the little bookmark, which is cool. I'm not sure how I feel about like this neon orange, but because it's a freebie, I can't really complain, right? So I'm very grateful for this. Uh, it's a very thick like cardstock. What I've noticed though is that like the cover is um, already kind of like warping. I don't know if it's from moisture or what. And then also because I had to just moisturize my hands because it's the middle of winter. <laughs> That's what this dark spot is here. I don't mind. <laughs> um, but it's definitely like more of a matte absorbent finish than the Cousin. All right, so this is my first year in a Take a Note. I saw some videos on it, heard that it's, ooh, oh my goodness, I'm in love. <laughs> Um, so the color scheme is a little different here. I don't see any like red. It seems more of, hmm, I've heard people say brown. So maybe like a, hmm, like a dark deep brown and like a gray here, bluish gray. I love the color theme of it. So on the left side here, we have the last four months of 2022. We have 2023 and the first four months of 2024, which I think is fantastic because if I'm being honest in my other planners, when it included all of 2022, 2023, and 2024, I would never use it. So this is like just enough to get you thinking ahead or if you wanted to move in early and things like that. 
So this page is very interesting. It's very different than what I've had in my Hobonichi, or I believe so at least, in my Hobonichi planners. Let's see if I can bring it a little closer so you can see up close. There seems to be like this little dotted dash line here, two of them to align with these two rows of grids um, so that maybe you can write what you're tracking. So this will be really interesting. I'm not really sure how to use this. Um, just yet. So if you have any ideas, please, of course, feel free to leave them down below. All right. So this is really exciting. I love this. I'm very excited. Ooh, oh my God. Okay. So one thing I noticed, um, comparison wise, I think the font is a lot smaller in the take a note, um, which I can appreciate because I have very tiny handwriting, but at the same time, I feel like my eyes are having a hard time reading it. <laughs> And maybe it's because I was sitting like so far back trying not to get my head into the video. Um, but I will do a comparison with the cousin once we're done. So this is the, I guess, the equivalent of a future log here. And I love that it's gridded. It's gridded on um, both, uh, just gridded, you know, not, I was going to say both in horizontal and vertical direction, but that's what a grid is, right? <laughs> uh, so the first six months, the second six months, or second half of the year. And then uh, moving into December of 2022, I love this monthly spread. Um, I'm gonna do a comparison of the size, but where I feel like the Hobonichi Cousin takes up more of the space, this one gives you more space on this side here, which I kind of like. I'm thinking maybe I can do like a priority list per week here that I can carry over to weeklies, I don't know. But this is just so different. There's definitely, um, I don't know if you can tell, there's like faint little page numbers here, which is really, rate as well. Um, I'm thinking like if I wanted to reference the monthly uh, from the, ooh, I'm so excited. Uh, and okay, so the paper seems a little thicker too. I'm very excited to see how my pens perform, like the Tombow Dual Brush pens and my fountain pens and things. So that will be really interesting. Um, I love the font that they use. That's great here. And then there's space here on the right too, as well as down below. So those are the monthlies. Let's see when it ends. So January 2024. Oh wow, February. And it goes all the way into March of 2024, which uh, is actually quite impressive. So this is really interesting. Is this December 26th? Yes. And then January 1st. So the way this is spread or I guess set up is that it's four days Three to four days per two page spread um, So as you can see here, which I didn't fully understand before I bought the planner Honestly, there's a weekly layout here on this left column uh, in the beginning of each week So every four pages, I guess and so it has Monday start to Sunday and then it starts Monday on the second column Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday um, it has timestamps here from 6 a.m down to 3 a.m so it basically covers your whole day and it has additional spaces up top and below as well I'm really loving this and um, I'll tell you why once we do the comparison so let's see in the back there's very very few uh, gridded sheets back here and then some your name and contact information in the back as opposed to the cousin who puts it in the front it has like these little kind of like markings these little old dots in different parts of the page to kind of like order your page divide it into quarters uh, which is really interesting i think that would be actually very beneficial i like that a lot but um, overall um i will say i'm very excited i am impressed by the quality of paper considering how like thin the book was uh when we pulled it out and i love the color and the vibes it's very neutral natural kind of i guess feel to it which is definitely what i'm trying to achieve this following year in 2023 and um like i said i, I just really don't <laughs> i'm not sure that i'm feeling like this neon bookmark but freebie so it's okay very cool all right so let's do a quick comparison now um if you'll bear with me of the hobonichi cousin and the chicken oat so ignoring how fat my <laughs> Hobonichi Cousin from 2022 is. This is what we have. We have this extra sheet here. 
Um, if you notice or remember what I was saying earlier, where they have 2021, 2022, and 2023, as you can see, completely ignored here, did not use it at all. Um, so this will be much better to not waste that space. Um, font wise, this would be a good opportunity to show you how the numbers are much smaller and like, the font is much smaller in the take a note here but that's just one spread. And then switching gears into like this index section or um, some people call it, I think the future log, you can see the same thing as well, where the font in the Hobonichi Cousin seems to be much larger than the font here. It's very interesting. The numbers are pretty legible um, and even <laughs> the months are a lot smaller in the table now. So. I didn't think I had an eye problem, but now I'm just like wondering, maybe, <laughs> maybe I do. <laughs> so let's see if I can find a good comparison in the cousin. Uh, okay, they all look a little wonky. So <laughs> let's use February here in the monthly spreads. So it doesn't have to be the same month, but for some reason. Oh yeah, look how much smaller. So you can tell that the take a note monthly spread, it gives you a lot more space on the outskirts here. It looks like the grid is about the same size, uh, but don't quote me on that. I feel like the lines are much more muted and lighter here, uh, which I actually can appreciate. I think that it'll take away from what would normally distract me when I'm writing and after I've added things, but I won't know until I start writing things down, I think. Okay, and then let's go to the weeklies. And this is where I kind of wanted to do that comparison anyway. Um, so I'm gonna take you to one that I haven't done. I've been kind of delinquent. <laughs> not, not really good at um, keeping up with these. These are the dailies. So first of all, there's no dailies in a take a note, A5. So here's <laughs> the last time that I did a weekly spread. Um, I did not do this 42nd week here. So this is October. And so this is the where you can really see the difference where in you know the Hobonichi Cousin weekly spread, you have all seven days of the week, Monday start to Sunday, um, on one like two page spread, as opposed to this take a note, which has um, kind of like that vertical Hobonichi weeks type layout where you have Monday through Sunday here uh, in this horizontal direction, or sorry, vertical direction. Um, and then in the horizontal direction, then you have like space, but it's a half a page per day with timestamps. Um, so that's where you really see the difference between the two. And it almost feels like it's two columns equivalent to one here. So two, two in the Hobonichi, roughly cousin equals one day in the Hobonichi, sorry, not the Hobonichi, <laughs> the take a note. Um, so that's interesting. Same thing, the grid lines are a lot lighter. I'm super excited about that. The paper seems just a little thicker. Um, so if you can, I don't know if you can tell, but maybe it's because like I feel like the ghosting isn't as bad um, but we won't really know until we kind of dive in um, but yeah that's about it I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I see here I do notice that it does the same thing where it kind of like circles the week that you're in has the whole month here at a glance um, but what I love really love about this is that this sounds so awful but it has no red like the one thing I didn't love about the cousin was all the like loud red and um, I really really like the neutral tones that they selected for the font and things like that so all in all, I'm very excited. If you're interested in seeing my journey in 2023 through this A5, um, take a note, please make sure you're subscribed. Um, if you have any suggestions for, I guess, a cover, because I'm gonna be looking for a cover for this bad boy, I don't think it's going to survive. I thought I saw in some videos that it was like their planner maybe in 2022 came with like a plastic clear cover. I don't see one in the package that I was sent. So hmm, I'm definitely going to need to get something to protect this one. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know down below. Thank you so much and until next time, bye everyone.